You want to glue something? No problem. <laughs> Welcome back to Oscar Overlander. Today we are diving in to the gluing process of 252 Sikaflex in detail. So we achieve the highest bonding strength out of this material. But first of all, I want to give the uh, sales rep from Sika a shout out. Um, I know he's watching, he said he's, he will watch the video because <coughs> he set me up with the swag as you can see and with uh, enough primer. Now I will take that cap off uh, so you can see me better in the light, you know. Uh, so before we get into the details, um, how we use this material, clean both sides, sand it this side a little bit more so I can put a longer um, glue line on there. And here I also, just on this outside here, I sand it here a little bit because I'm going to put two lines on there. Just one on the alcohol cleaned side surface and then this one uh, with uh, the sanded surface and glue without primer. So now we're going to use this activator. Once you can see this is wet there at the peak, you know, and now I'm going to apply that. There you go. This is the activator. You have to let it sit there for 10 minutes, let it air out, and then we proceed with the next step. Now I'm going to add the primer, the 207. So the primer has to air out as well, minimum 10 minutes. And because we're not applying any primer on that side, so basically we can go ahead and apply the glue, uh, the glue line. So that is the Sika Flex 252, you know, which we're going to apply now. V cut on the tip, as you can see here. And it's pretty tough to get out of here, so. Okay. Now we apply a line here on the sanded part. It's coming out pretty tough. And we're going to apply a line on the primer. As you can see, uh, it's a triangular shape right there. Now you see it pretty good. So we let that sit overnight and then we see tomorrow after 24 hours how easy it will be to remove any of these. Now on the end of the video, we will make a destruction test on each of these uh, glue lines. So the first thing we did is uh, setting up all the aluminum sheets up on the roof in position with their cutouts and everything, you know. And then we marked from the underside with the felt pen basically all the uh, horizontal running roof rafters on the underside. So that after we took them off again, you know, and put them on the work table, we could see where actually the rafters are you know, and where the structure is on the sheet, so we could sand and, and prime the, 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 the right, prepare the, the right spots on the sheet. We will explain step by step what we're doing with the uh, pennants. So first of all, we are sanding where we have marked, and you can see the lines here, right there, the lines. So we will sand, roughen the surface, As you can see, right, this is all from our sanding paper and um, of course the, uh, the scrapes, like the aluminum chips which come off through the sanding process. Next we take the activator, Sika Activator 205 and a little spongy, pour a little bit in here. Now we let this uh, flush off for 10 minutes minimum 
and after the 10 minutes, we will apply the primer. Now we can apply the primer. That's the Sika Primer 207. So the primer is applied all the way around. You can see here, all the way. Now we're going to uh, sand the surface of the primer, you know, on the whole uh, roof, all the way. And then we will give this a clean again, you know, like the, the, the primer dust. Clean it off with cleaning alcohol, with brake cleaner basically. And then we're going to apply the activator. Primer. You can see we have a triangular shaped caulking bead right there all the way along. Yeah, this is a, the caulking bead is basically, I would say you can see my finger here, half an inch tall. And we squish it down to the thickness of the toothpick, two millimeter, right? Right there. Okay, now. Keep it away from the... First plate is glued down and we are using toothpicks as spacers. The toothpick has a two millimeter diameter, so they are perfect spacers. The toothpicks right there, every, every 30, 30 centimeter, every foot. And they stay there forever. We have four out of four and a half, just a half one we need to uh, apply, but four are done. Now we have the last half sheet glued down and the roof is complete. But yeah, it looks very, very good. You know, so now I have everywhere a three millimeter, one eighth gap in between. And I will fill the gap later on if this is uh, dried, the glue is dried. I will fill that with that 291. I'm taping both sides, you know, and then fill the gap here with that uh, 291. And if this is done, I, I fill that flush, right? Completely flush with the aluminum. Because later on, if this is the gap is filled and dried, I will put a 50 millimeter, two inch aluminum strip over the whole thing. Also with uh, 252 Zika glue, the one we used here underneath to glue the pendants on. Glue that strip on there. And then I will again, with a paintable silicone, uh, caulk along the edges of the strip. So then I have multiple layers, which the water has to take to get in inside, you know, multiple barriers, basically. So because this material is not coming for free, you know, f maybe for some of you guys, but, but not for me and uh, probably not for the most of us, but uh, it is quite expensive and that's why it's better to buy the right amounts. Yeah. Um, maybe having one or two tubes more than you need that just to be safe, but it's always not good. Uh, having to less than you can't finish your project and you have some waiting time again and and that's why it's good to have some information about How much do I really need right? So now just to explain that Sorry if I turn a bit away from the camera, but you know my my, my project is actually five and a half meter long and two and a half meter wide Okay, so just for a uh, imagination per uh, per joint uh, per Per joint uh, uh, structure, I, when I have basically uh, the, the plates joining, then I have two glue lines on it. If I have it not joining, then there's only one glue line on it. Based on that experience, we used on the roof seven of these glue cartridges. Okay, so 300 milliliter times seven. Yeah, so 2.1 liter you basically need for or I need it for my roof. Okay, we glued four and a half sheets down. 
We also, uh, based on that basically, it's kind of tough to say oh, you need for each side zone so much primer and activator and glue. Uh, I can say it now uh, in case of the glue, we needed seven cartridges. I was planning eight, so I'm basically bang on. I have one cartridge left and uh, yeah, that doesn't hurt me so much, you know, so that's okay. And I will multiply that basically for the whole project. You know, I, I know I need less at the bottom. Uh, there I need six cartridges, you know, and I need eight for the roof, eight for each side, yeah. And then four on the front and uh, basically four for the back. So 40 cartridges I would order in regards of the 252 Zikaflex glue. Activator, you would need two of these bottles, each contain 250 milliliter, that's uh, not written on here. Uh, half a liter for this project. Primer, 207, here is it written on it, 250 mil. Primer, half a liter as well. So again, you need half a liter activator for such a project, two and a half meter by, by five and a half meter length. Half liter uh, activator, half liter primer, you know, and about 40 cartridges of glue. So the primer is by far the most important um, ingredients in the glue process uh, beside the glue himself. Okay, and I'd want to say um, the increments, the primer cans or bottles are coming in. This is the tiny one they gave me as a sample, basically. It's 30 milliliter. Yeah, I'm telling you that because if you have really just a small project, then you, then you know what size of uh, primer can you may order. So that's a 30 milliliter. The next one is coming in uh, 100 milliliter. It's a significant difference, right? And then the next one is 250 milliliter primer. And there's also uh, a one liter can available. I think the one liter is then the biggest one, okay? There's a V cut in it, and that has to be uh, that way. So if you put it onto your, your, your um, cartridge, the V cut always, when you apply it, it needs to show away from you. These type of nozzles, they're coming with the cartridges. If you don't have them, it's easy to cut, to cut such a v, v cut into a normal caulking tip. The glue requires basically a minimum of two millimeter um, glue thickness because it is a, a glue which stays elastic, yeah, but has a high bonding strength, but it stays elastic. And that's why it, it's specially made for automotive, you know, uh, because we have constant earthquakes on this whole thing, right? Because it always, always shakes. And therefore, I was planning to use these glazing packers, the blue ones here, they have two millimeter in thickness. But when I, when I tried the first time placing them, you can see it occupies almost the whole width of the uh, steel structure, right? So, and then I thought maybe I cut them in half and you, ah, it's all too much work. So I, the next idea was basically those ordinary toothpicks and I measured them and it showed me it's perfect two millimeter. I hope the camera can pick that up. It doesn't take much space away, you know, but it, it ensures that I have the two millimeter glue thickness between the aluminum and the steel. Yeah, and it is very, very important that if you have a steel structure and you clad it with aluminum, that the steel and the aluminum is not touching each other. They should not come in contact. Why? Because it will provide a galvanic corrosion. So for the sake of the video, I will not explain now in detail what the galvanic corrosion is. You can Google it, you know, but it's basically a, a electrochemical reaction between an active and a passive metal. Yeah, the, the electrons from the active metal going over into a passive metal and that weakens the active metal and it starts corroding. That's where you, you see it when you use uh, steel screws going through aluminum. Around that screw head is all kind of co all corroded. Even if aluminum can't rust, but it will corrode. Now, it's more than 24 hours that this has been cured, you know, and let's do the test now how easy they are to remove. So let's try the obviously easiest one, the one without anything. So I'm going to pull on it. And that is 
pretty hard, but oh look, as soon as you have it started, you can remove it almost 100%. Look, it's coming off. I don't have to pull hard on it and snap, it's all off. So that is obviously not very good. Now let's try on this one, uh, which we have sand it only, no, no activator, no primer, just sand it. Okay, let's see how much difference there is. Yeah, it's, it's different. Oh, I have to hang into it. Uh, but I gotta start now, you see? Can you see, I hope you can see it. Oh, my finger, yeah. I oh, I almost knocked the camera off. <laughs> So it, it is harder, definitely harder to pull it off. But I still can remove it, you see here? It's coming off in pieces. So I think that's good enough. We know, you know what, I, what I'm going to do. No, it is coming off with significant more force. You see here? Now, and off it is. So, yeah, it's coming off as well, but not so easy as this one was. Now let's pull on this one with the primer on the right side. So as you can see the milky spot here, this is the activator. Yeah, and the black stuff, this is the primer. And then here is the glue. So let's try to pull on that. I hope I don't knock the camera off here. But there's, yeah, no. It was, oh, no. No, no, there's no way. Let me get a screwdriver. So let's try it with the screwdriver to like, oh. Well, it's still on here. You see, this is still, it's still attached to the primer, the, the, the lowest surface. It's just the, the top which came off that little bit. But there's absolute no way to pull it off by hand. No. No. Not even if I rip it with a plier. Let's try that. Let's try to pull it with a plier. Oh. Yeah, I just ripped the top off as much as I could grab. Uh, you see here, the bottom part. The bottom part is still on. This is still on here. You know, the, the, the glue. So, as you can see, this is a, a significant difference, you know, to, to that or to that, even to that, you know. But this is really, this is really necessary and really good stuff. You know, it's like, if I be hard on it. And it's still, it's still, the bottom is still on there. You know, yeah, I, I think you get the idea. You know, this is, this is crazy, crazy stuff. So I hope uh, you could take something with you about the gluing process and uh, the Sika products in, in general, you know, and we will continue this week uh, with cladding. I have already cut, you, the camera is sitting on top of it. All the sheets for the bottom, they are already cut. Uh, tomorrow and the day after, I will uh, install them at the bottom. So, and then we will continue with the side. So we will see um, <clears throat> how far we get because I don't have all the uh, Sika cartridge. I, I'm waiting uh, on a delivery. You know, I ordered more. I was a little hesitant to order so many at the beginning because I don't know how much I need. Now I know it and I told you. You know, so I ordered the rest of it and I probably can pick it up Tuesday or Wednesday and then we'll continue with my cladding. Also a big shout out on all my newest subscribers. I'm hoping this is uh, staying that way because we are closing in on 300 and I'm, I'm really thankful for that. If you don't mind, I will see you next Friday. Oh.